Okay guys, so I said I would be doing an uh, overview video for the new Hummingbird Helix 7. Um, this will be that video. Basically, I'm just going to kind of walk you through all the features of it, uh, the menus and all that. Um, I'd really try to get a good camera set up on this, but it's not exactly how I wanted, so we're, you'll have to kind of work with me a little bit. But uh, anyways, we'll go ahead and get into it. Again, this is the Hummingbird Helix 7. Uh, this has the side imaging and GPS, so this has all the features you could possibly get on a Helix 7. So if you're looking to buy one and you're wanting to kind of see what's in there, um, this has everything. Now, of course, there are lesser units. Of course, they have the Helix 7 with just DI. Um, they have DI and GPS. They have just sonar, I believe. Um, the only downside to these units that I have found and I did not realize before I purchased it, uh, these are standalone units. They do not have uh, networking features on them. Um, I would assume that that's a cost saving because these are really, really, really cheap units for what you're getting for them. But for, I mean, for such a, for something with so much technology in it, I figured they would have included that. But uh, anyways, just kind of a, a, a quick overview there. We'll go ahead and jump into it here. So here we have our actual unit. Um, so on the top here, we'll go over our buttons. Here we have our view button at the very top. That changes the views that we have. Uh, like you can switch between sonar, just sonar, I mean sonar, down imaging, etc, etc, etc. Any of the views that you have, they're all pre-set up in there, but you can turn on which ones you want to view and which ones you don't want to view when you hit these buttons. And I'll, I'll, I'll go over that with you. Uh, here we have the plus zoom and a uh, minus zoom. This is the uh, check mark, this is just confirmation. We have the mark button right here. Anytime you want to mark a point, uh, whether you're on it or what, I mean, it uh, just any time at all, you want to mark a point, you'll just press that button and it'll go ahead and mark it for you. If you have an SD card in your unit, it will also take a screenshot of that and uh, save it on there as well. So pr pretty neat feature there that uh, Lorance does not have. Uh, you can take screenshots with Lorance, but they don't take them once you mark a point. Uh, here we have our menu button. That's the one we're going to be using the most today. Here we have go to. Uh, this will go to any uh, point that you have marked already, and I'll show you that feature as well. And then, of course, we have our exit button here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started here and start up our unit. Uh, these things do get started up pretty quick. Of course, it's going to show us our transducer is not connected. We're going to be running in simulation mode, and we'll go from there. So there you go. You see this thing's already started up. It's ready to go. Okay, so we'll switch. We'll hit our view button here. And this will just kind of, your view button will cycle you forward through all your, uh, what you have set up and what you don't, et cetera, et cetera. The exit button will go backwards in your switching. So if you went one too far accidentally on your view, like here we have our uh, side imaging and our uh, mapping. Let's say we went forward one. Oh crap, we went to just down imaging. We really wanted to see that map and what we're uh, scanning on the side. Just hit exit and that takes you back to the previous um, one that you had there. So on your left side here, you'll see we have our depth, our, um, this is supposed to be temperature. Of course, it's not reading temperature. Um, of course our coordinates, time, speed, you can edit all of these and we'll get into that later. But, uh, so first off here, we'll go into our main, main, main menu. So if you hit the menu button once on whatever you're on, it will bring up a menu to control those two screens. If you hit it again, this takes you to your main menu. Okay, so our first menu here is our alarms. We have our depth alarm first. Uh, this lets you set an, a, an alarm for, let's say we, if we get in two feet of water, we, don't, we want an alarm to tell us, hey, you are way too shallow, and it will start beeping at you and let you know, hey, you need to back off, or you know, if you say, hey, I wanna stay in 50 feet, and you move off of 50 feet, well then this alarm will let you know that. Um, I've used it before, it's kind of annoying, but uh, <laughs> it, it, it is a useful feature, but I, I had it set to if I went too shallow and I was always going way shallower than I needed to, and it was just making noise and I finally just turned it off. Uh, fish ID alarm, these units do have a fish ID on them, so if you're over fish and they think that there's fish there, they will uh, ID them. This will let you know um, when you're on a fish, uh, you can set it to off, uh, to any size fish, to larger fish, and then to really big fish, it'll let you know. Um, my experience with this is it, it works okay. 
I mean, it'll let you know when there's fish there, but usually in my case, it was sand bass and they were never really that big. So it got kind of annoying again. Uh, not with this unit, I might add. Um, I'm, I haven't used any of these features with this unit at all. I've had this unit on like once. The old unit I had, it was a real old Hummingbird 5, one of the old grayscale ones. So, um, but still kind of the same menus. Uh, so a low battery al battery alarm. This will let you set um, if your um, voltage is getting low, it'll set an alarm and tell you the same thing. Temperature alarm. If your unit is getting too hot, you can set it up, you know, all the way up there. Uh, off course alarm. If you have a course you're set on that you're heading to and it says, hey, you're going uh, off the way for, you know, 325 feet, then it will do that. And of course, you can set it all the way down here to 50 feet. 25 feet and then just off arrival alarm same thing it'll let you know hey when you're within 150 feet it'll let you know that you're there drift alarm uh never use that not real sure what it's for i would assume for if you're drifting off of a point it will let you know um and this is just your alarm tone there's the high tone the medium and the low and if those are going off all the time they can get annoying that's why i said uh if you have some of these alarms set, they can get kind of annoying. Uh, and then we have timer set up here. There's a timer for some reason. I don't know what you'd need to use it for, um, but it's there. So, um, and to get into any of these, you just push left and right on your um, directional pad on there and it'll let you change any of them left and right to the different variations of them. So of course you have your timer set up and then you can actually start your timer there. So that's the main alarms menu. So we're gonna go all the way back up. Well, not too far to the alarms tab. We're gonna push to the right. Now we're on our sonar tab here. Here you can select which beam you're using. Uh, you can use the 283, you can use just 83 or just 200. Um, if you know, it's really, the that's how wide the beam is. I'm not gonna go into super detail. I mean, if you wanna do some, um, some studying on it, you'll figure out how the beam works. But uh, of course, 83 is gonna be a more narrow beam. It's gonna go straight down. The 200 is a wider beam shooting from out. So you, you get to see more, uh, but less detail. Surface clutter, this is basically, it really doesn't matter to me. And I, I don't know where this would come into uh, play, but uh, generally surface clutter will just kind of get rid of wash or if there's wind or anything like that. Uh, I've never really used it. Switch fire. Uh, this is a neat, neat, neat feature. If you have just sonar, and we'll go over this, um, what switch fire, switch fire mode is, there's max mode and there's clear mode. Uh, max mode is a lot, I guess a lot more clear. So this is if you're wanting to play video game fishing. If you're drop shotting and you see fish down there and you want to see your jig or your drop shot, you're gonna, or I believe, clear, I'm sorry, I'm not sure which one is which, but uh, I believe it's max mode is the one that if you're drop shotting and you want to see your drop shot and the fish around it, that's when you're gonna go into. Clear mode is just your standard sonar. I could have those backwards, so don't quote me on that because again, this is new technology to me. But uh, one, is just, one is just your standard sonar. The other gives you super detail, lets you see your jig or whatever it is that's down there. It lets you see your lure going under that sonar. Like we mentioned earlier, we have the fish ID alarm. Uh, fish ID will show you when there are fish under your boat. It will let you know. It will mark them on your map and say it'll put a little fish icon on there and say, hey, here's a fish. Um, it's not 100% accurate, but uh, as I've seen, it is fairly accurate. Uh, fish ID sensitivity, this just lets you, you know, if you're finding that you're picking up, I guess, bait fish as fish, then you might want to uh, up, back down or go up on the sensitivity. Uh, RTS window, this will let you turn it narrow, wide, or off. Uh, sonar colors, this is just the palette that you use on your sonar. Um, let me exit out of here. We'll go to a sonar mode and I'll show you that. Uh, and w to me, it's weird. If you hit your menu in the first one, um, it doesn't let you change your sonar color. You can only do it if you go into the main menu. So let's switch our active side here. And again, we'll get to all of this eventually. Okay, so our left side is active. Okay, so our sonar colors here. Right now we're in palette one. Well, let's, let's actually just get a straight sonar. I apologize. We are not gonna be, okay, straight sonar. So 
If we go into our main sonar menu, sonar color, we have our original palette. Uh, we have palette one, which is kind of the best one to me. Uh, palette two is green. Again, you can just change all the colors, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Uh, and there's quite a few of them on here. So we have bottom view, we have structure ID and white line. And as you can see there, at the bottom here, okay, on white line, you just have the white line for your bottom. If you go to structure ID, that turns to black and it'll show you your actual structure coming off the bottom. Uh, with this just in simulation, I can't really give you any kind of details on it, but when you play with it, it's that's when you, if you know you're gonna need that, you'll know you need to play with this feature. Okay, and zoom width, you have narrow, medium, and wide. That's if you zoom into a uh, certain thing there, it'll, it will let you change how it zooms in. Uh, side imaging readouts will show on or off. Of course, you know what that is, color bar, on or off. That just lets you change the, uh, on the side here, it'll let you show the colors and what, the, what are going in there. Generally, you just need that off. That's just nothing. Ice fishing mode, have no idea what that is. Uh, down here in Texas, we don't get ice, so I don't know anything about it. Uh, no, it comes out of refrigerators, but that's about it. Uh, sonar colors, uh, you have your, oops. Again, back there. So we've come all the way back around here. Color bar, ice fishing mode, and we're back up to sonar. So we're gonna move over here to our navigation. Uh, current track, we're gonna go over to our right. This will let you save your current track. It'll let you clear them, the appearance of it, and it'll let you stop tracking it, stop saving it in there. Uh, your track is like, let's say you stop, you start from the ramp, you stop in a marina, then you go down the lake and hit another arm. It will show that track of exactly where you're going on your unit. Um, waypoints, routes, tracks, again, this shows all that, lets you kind of get in there, of course, we don't have any right now, so we don't have any options or anything to do with it. Uh, it'll let you sort by whatever you have them named, if you save them in there, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so we will go exit out here. Go back to our main. Uh, waypoint settings, this lets you set your waypoints by icons. You can change different icons. Um, what kind, let's see, let's go here. What kind of icon you use. It's, I mean, it's, see we have our home medical fish just however you want to mark it you can mark it however you'd like uh this, of course you saw the standard there was just a little blue dot if you right now if we have it set to just standard marking then it would have marked it with that blue dot but of course there's a million different things in here that you can change it to like if you come across some grass you can use that and mark it with grass there so that is that let's get out of here Okay, uh, save track defaults. This just shows you, this is what, um, it'll show you that the tracks are visible on there, on your maps, and this will show you the style. You can, of course, you can go and change your style. Oops, just hit over, and then you'll hit up and down and what they look like. You can change the color, et cetera, et cetera. We'll go and save that. Okay, chart orientation. Um, this will show you how your orientation to your map looks with your boat on there, and I'll show you the boat later. Uh, casting rings, this will let you set to, um, on your navigation, kind of where you're casting to. Uh, I mean, casting a rings ex explains itself. Uh, north reference, you have true, and then you have magnetic. Um, true, it means it will face true north all the time. That means no matter which way you're facing, it's going to face north. Magnetic will face north to whichever you're facing. Uh, trolling get grid rotation, not sure what that is. Don't do any trolling. Track point interval, this will let you set how often it tracks. Um, north up indicator, same thing, will show you uh, which way is up at all times. Course projection line, uh, again, kind of the same thing. 3D view outline is visible, hidden, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, continuous navigation mode is off right now. Of course, you can turn it to on. Uh, SI navigation is on. That's side imaging navigation, and uh, that's it for our navigation. So we'll go over one more. This is our charting. Uh, this basically sh lets you set up what shows up on your charting. So here we have our latitude and longitudinal grids. Uh, I have those hidden right now. Of course, you can turn them on. Uh, 
the navigation aids on bird's eye view. You can turn them on or off, chart select. Of course we have auto right now. That would be if you had an extra SD card with, uh, for, I think Hummingbird uses Navionics and something else. I don't recall which other ones they use, but you can select whether you want to use these charts or if you have something else. Uh, shaded depth, chart detail level. Of course you can have underwater, navigation, basic, etc., etc. Map borders. Um, this is if you want to choose SD card or what's on there, or you can choose everything. Spot surrounding or visible. And that's all for our charting. Not a lot of options going in there. Okay, so this is our actual setup. You can set your units to feet, fathoms, uh, distance. Of course, you can have st regular miles, which is statute miles, or you can use nautical miles, which of course is water miles. Uh, speed, miles per hour, uh, knots. User mode is normal, and then you have advanced. If you go into advanced, it gives you just a little bit more stuff to do. But again, Hummingbird is kind of all about the simplicity. So uh, generally, you're just going to want to use the regular. You can set up your language. Uh, trip log, of course, is what we went over earlier. It shows your trips. And then you can just restore your defaults there. Go back to if you get in there and get to messing around and get everything out of whack, you can just go restore it to factory defaults through there. Uh, sonar, you can turn off here. So we turn our sonar off and we don't have anything to do. Turn it back on. Uh, sound control, this lets you show alarms only, all sounds, or you can have it make no sounds if you get tired of that beeping. Uh, screen snapshot, you can turn that on. You can take a snapshot of your screen. And that's that was the last one on that one. And the last one we have here are our views. This is... Um, like what I mentioned earlier, for the, if you hit the view button, it's going to cycle through all these. Well, let's say we don't need uh, our chart and down imaging. Well, there's no point in having it on there. I don't want to have to cycle through everything. You know, I don't want to have to cycle through, you know, however many combos. I don't need that. I don't need my chart and regular sonar. I'm never going to use that. Or my chart and my side view. I'm never going to use that. Of course, we want our down imaging if we want to just use down imaging. Uh, down imaging and side. Of course, we're going to need that. Uh, down imaging and sonar. We're going to need that. Down imaging side and sonar combi, that's going to give you three different views on there. Of course, we'd love to have that. Just side imaging, uh, just sonar view, of course, sonar zoom. We might not need that, so let's turn that off. So if, now when you cycle through all of your views, the ones that we have put hidden on there will not show up anymore. So you don't have to cycle through all those things that you're not going to use any longer. Um, and that's it for the main, main, main menu. So we've turned all those off. We'll exit out of here. Hit our menu button. So let's go to our, right now we have our charting up. So if we hit our menu, right now we can, we can always switch which side is active if we have two menus up. So right now we have our left side here, that's our active one. We can switch that of course to our right. So now this one's kind of grayed out and this is our main one here. Here we can split our positioning. Right now we have it 50-50. Let's say we really need that right side to, to show a little bit more. We can move that over and make that right hand side a lot bigger there and we can do that on anything that has split screens on it okay so we go back here you can save your current track on there we went through that earlier with the menu we can save um, what we're doing you just basically push to the right if there are arrows on there you basically just push that way to to confirm what you're doing so right now we have do we want to save our current track we can push to the right if we don't we'll push back to the left of course we're not we don't have anything to save so we're just going to go back to the left and we're out of that menu and back into our other one. And of course we can clear our current track if we don't think we've set up a good pattern or you know, for whatever reason. So that's our menus on our charting. So we go out of there, we'll exit that out. Okay, so we'll get to a different view here. Now we have our just standard down imaging here. Okay, so we'll bring up our menu for that. So we have our sensitivity as our first option on there. Of course we can set it higher or lower depending if you need to see something else. Uh, our down imaging enhancement. This lets you set sensitivity, contrast, and sharpness. So if you see something on there and it's not quite showing up, you can change that contrast to make it darker, perhaps show up, uh, turn the sharpness on, you know, any of that, that that can help you out. You can really dial this unit in, which Laurent, you could not really do that. I mean, you can, but you can't. It wasn't quite as easy to get in there and do that, which I find this is really neat that you can do that for just, just the down imaging on here. Okay, so we'll exit out of that, bring our menu back up. Uh, we can set our range right now, we have auto. I mean, if you, if you know you're gonna be just fishing in 20 feet, you can set it to 20 feet and it'll just show 20 feet down there and uh, it'll show you everything that's in that 20 feet. 
course, you can set it to auto as well. Okay. Uh, charting speed. Uh, of course, you know what that does. It's, it'll let you chart faster or slower, depending. You know, if you're going six miles an hour and you know you're not getting everything you want to see, just slow that charting speed down there. Okay. And then of course your imaging colors. It lets you change it right in the menu, which it doesn't do with sonar. I don't understand that, but. So I like mine set on blue, so we'd set it on blue. It, it's really up to your eyes and what you're seeing as to what you want it set to. Okay, so we'll get out of that. We'll hit our view button again. Now we have our, uh, we'll just do just side imaging here. We'll bring that up, okay. Now we have just our side imaging here. Of course, we have our trees here. Pretty neat the way it looks. Um, if you've never had side imaging before, which I never had before this, it's an amazing technology. Um, really 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 neat uh, it's just just really awesome so we're going to hit our menu button in there right now we have our side imaging we can choose right now we have both sides of the boat we can choose just left so now we have just the left side scanning there we can choose just right now we have just the right side there of course we generally want both unless you just really come up on something that you want to uh want to scan okay of course we can change our sensitivity our enhancements here same thing you can set all kinds of different options in there. Sensitivity, contrast, sharpness, and contour mode. That's pretty neat. Uh, basically, that kind of gets you a little zoom in there. kind of shows you how your contouring looks there. Uh, it, it cuts out that middle part there and lets you really see the contours of what you're scanning. And that's something that, you're, that you'll have to play with and kind of learn on your own. Uh, it, it won't come naturally, but it's a neat feature. Okay. Exit out of there, hit our menu. Of course, we have our range. Right now, we're set 120 feet to the both left and right of the boat. Um, generally, I like to keep it about 90. Of course, you can go up or down, depending. You're going to lose some detail, depending on which way you go. But uh, you could set it however you'd like. Uh, again, charting sp speed, like we said earlier, our colors. And that's it for our side imaging. Okay. Um, so here we have just our sonar. So if we go into menu here, we can set the sensitivity. We can set the uh, lower range, uh, how low or high we want to go. So we can set it to 30 feet there. It's going to show us 30 feet. Our chart speed and our jigging mode, that's what we went over earlier. Uh, jigging mode lets you show your lure under there. Uh, kind of the same thing with our features we went over earlier. Okay, we'll exit out of that. Okay, one last thing I want to show you here. When we go into our setup, if we are in the advanced user mode, you cannot do this if you're not in advanced. We will go down here and uh, we will go to select readouts. Our readouts are what show up on our left hand side here. Um, so we'll go select readouts. Right now we have depth on the top one, temperature on the middle. We have our position, which is our uh, coordinates. They're on three, readout on four, which is just our time. And then of course we have speed on the bottom. So let's say we want our depth on the top. We want temperature uh, in the middle position we don't care about we don't want position uh, we don't we have our speed at the bottom um, but we want our time we want to know what time it is so we'll set that there but we have a time here already well what if we want the date um, well we'll set our time plus date there uh, if you don't want anything at the bottom you just turn it off and that cell goes away down here um, if and you can turn off all these cells you can turn off every one of them if you just want to see that full screen uh, again, that's only in the uh, advanced mode. Of course, our data is showing wrong here, but um, we're just in simulation mode. But that's basically uh, the overview. That's pretty much everything you can do on this unit. Um, of course, we have our side imaging, GPS, mapping, all that. I don't have any maps in it right now, so I'm not super familiar with that. Uh, eventually get that there. Um, but yeah, it's a neat little unit. Um, the Hummingbird has a lot of cool little features. They're very simple to get to. It's just a two button push to get to anything. Um, Lorentz was a lot more complicated than that, but you could do just a few more things with it. Um, but yeah, uh, if you liked it guys, uh, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can just go ahead and post it on the video. I, like I said, I'm not an expert at this. My, this is really just my second Hummingbird unit. And like I mentioned earlier, my other unit was really old. So, um, <laughs> I might as well be starting brand new. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good mess. And uh, we'll see you next time.